give us a second. Oh no, here we go. It's just my computer freezing. Okay, so just a couple of introductions. We've got obviously we've got Flo and Stephen. Flo is um, one of our um, lovely uh, art trainees from last year, um, and she now works in a local school. She works at Ash Manor School, is that right, Flo? Yes, that's right, yeah. And um, she's just coming to the end of her first half term as a fully fledged teacher. So thanks for joining us. And then we've got Stephen, um, who trained as an RE teacher with us last year. And he is actually working in the same placement school that he did his teacher training. That is at St. Bede's um, over the other side of the county. And again, he's coming to the end of his very first half term as a fully fledged teacher. OK, so in today's uh, training, we're going to be thinking about the following questions. So I'm going to ask Flo and Stephen to talk to us about why they decided to get into teaching in the first place. OK, and what what was it that prompted them to want to teach? And then I'm going to ask them to talk a little bit about, OK, so what's it like training? What's the theory side of the programme like? So we call that the centre based training, the stuff that you do at your your training hub. OK, and then what is it actually like to be in school? What's what's um, you know, how does the school based training actually work? Then I'm going to ask them about their highlights of the training year and then their biggest challenges and how they overcame those challenges. And then finally, we'll have a little bit of time at the end uh, to do some question and answer um, uh, with, with you all. And you get an opportunity to ask them questions about the actual uh, training year. And, and if you want to also ask them about their first half term as fully fledged teachers, because uh, that's always really, um, uh, really interesting as well. OK, so first thing we're going to think about is why P uh, Flo and Stephen got into teaching. So Flo, can I start with you? Just, can you just tell us about what made you want to become a teacher? Um, so I worked at a nursery for about a year before, um, after I finished uni before becoming a teacher. I, really, I absolutely love children. Um, they were too small, so I thought I need to work with something that I can actually teach my passion, which is art. So I studied textiles at university. And um, I just really like working with children. I like being that, kind of like guiding person I don't know it's funny thing to say. yeah I just, I just I love kids I don't, yeah and I like being around all the time and they make me feel good and I like that I make them feel like they've had a good day as well so yeah that's the main reason brilliant thank you <laughs> the idea of like loving working with children is, is really really important Stephen what made you want to become a teacher because um Flo just correct me if I'm wrong Flo it, it, Flo are you did you come into teaching straight out of university or had you done something else um so I did uni and then I did a year in a nursery and then I came into teaching. So um, I knew I wanted to work with children. I just didn't know what age. I wanted Brilliant. To work with. Okay. And Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong. You didn't come straight from university. You did nope. something else. You're a career changer. So talk to us about what made you want to become a teacher. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, I used to go into my placement school uh, to take assemblies quite often um, in my previous job. Um, so that's how I got to know uh, my, the school where I'm working. And dealing with assemblies, it was a great chance to explore the bigger questions in life uh, with, with the young people, you know, sort of the meaning of life, what is kindness, what are the values that make us who we are and keep us together. Um, and I found that um, I really enjoyed it and also thought that the, there were limits on how much I could do with, about that sort of thing. Uh, with young people um, in my previous job. So I decided to approach. Uh, my head of department and ask him whether he would consider having me on, which he happily did. And here we are. Brilliant. Okay, super. So that, so that experience, that direct experience of going into school made you realise I want more of this and I actually yeah, want to be a Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you. And so the next question we have is about the training that we do um, back at base. So, um, uh, so it was, it's slightly different for Flo and Stephen. So last year we only had one training base and that was at Waden. This year we have two training bases, um, one at Waden or Rygate. Um, but does, uh, Stephen, do you want to tell us a little bit about professional studies and what that that's about and your perspective on that what just give us a bit of like what do you do in those days and, and why were they important to you, mm -hmm. you know, I, I used to really look forward to professional studies because um, it was a great way to sort of catch up with everybody who was in the same boat um, it was a great way to socialize get to know other people who were doing the training with you and also to exchange ideas and, and to also feel that you weren't alone, uh, which is quite important, I think. And in professional studies, um, 
we got taught all the bread and butter of teaching, um, things, everything from planning to um, behavior management, making sure that you're assessing the kids well, uh, encouraging their behavior, developing their curiosities, and really to come across to the best of your ability um, uh, with passion for your subject and, th and that passion being an infectious thing, I think. So that's the main important thing that I took out of professional studies, how to convey what I knew about my subject, my passion for it, and inspire young minds. Brilliant. Okay. And, and, and so that, that's the one day a week that you come out of your schools and you get that theory input, um, uh, either, either at Wagen or at Reigate. Um, and subject studies flow. Now, um, obviously subject studies has changed slightly since, um, uh, since, uh, since you did it in the, in the sense that we're not doing it anymore um, on a weekly basis. And we have six days of subject studies um, of scattered across the year. But from, from your experience of, of doing subject studies, why was that part of the programme really important to you? Um, it allowed us to sort of ask those questions to somebody who is an expert in that field. And I mean, my subject studies tutor, she's been a teacher for years and years. So it was really nice to get her opinion on how things have changed from when she started teaching and to how she's learned how to teach something in an excellent way um, and it was really useful to have those opportunities to ask maybe for example I've been teaching watercolour painting and then I would struggled with a bit of it and I could get her to show me how she would do it and then I could take that on board and implement that into my my practice and it was also interesting to see how um, things were learned in professional studies so the theory then actually related to our subject because it kind of changes a little bit from subject to subject because art's quite practical but if you're teaching something like history or geography it's quite um heavily written based so it was nice to just see how the theory linked into actually teaching something yeah i, lo I love mm -hmm. subject studies so they were great good and and that and, and that point you made at the end is really important the idea that in on the mondays we we get the, the general theory we look at you know something like assessment we do across the board what does assessment mean in education but actually when you're then in your subject studies with your subject tutor you then look at it from a subject specific angle and you think okay what does that look like in my subject when i'm teaching it to the children in my classes so i'm really pleased you put, put you picked up that point so thank you yeah. and then um just on to, on that my computer's being a bit slow, give me a second. So just on that, um, another really important part of the programme is um, uh, other, other events and um, things that we do that are not necessarily related to um, uh, to the kind of work that we do. So um, Flo, do you want to just talk to us a little bit about the, the other events that, that um, or the other kind of opportunities that you got given throughout the course that weren't necessarily at Waden or weren't necessarily with your subject tutors? So some of the ones that we've got up on the screen there about the joint conferences and so on and so forth um yeah so we had i think we ended up doing three there was a fourth one planned in february march Tom, was that right and then we never got to do it um but we, so we did a behavior one a behavior conference well-being so that was our well-being as well as a little bit about how to check in on the students well-being and then we did like a cognition one so about the brain and how students develop and how children's brains work and things like that and they were really interesting because we met up with several other it so several other training courses and it was nice to actually have conversations with people maybe you hadn't met before and getting their opinion because if they worked in different areas obviously children change from county to county and things like that um and then also we visited um i can't remember the name of the school but in farnham the special school and we went and spent a day there and um learned about how maybe to deal with students in our school that are a mainstream school that have um certain learning needs and things like that yeah. and then we never got to the pupil referral unit but um that sounded really good and there was the man who came to do the behavioural conference and he worked at, the, at Apru and he was great because his experience of challenging behaviour put it into like light how actually some children aren't challenging because they want to be challenging it's maybe other factors and things like that but yeah those days were great it was nice to get out and meet and see other professionals and things in practice that weren't that we hadn't met before. Oh, that's um, and, and just to say, everybody, I mean, Flo and Stephen are uh, amazing, I mean, not just because they are amazing trainees, but also because their training year got cut short, um, hence why they weren't able to do all the conferences and go to the PRU. And the fact that they've just done their first half term in school, having only really um, kind of, you know, having only really trained until March is, is, is an amazing testament to them. Okay, the fact that they're able to go in and hold their own in front of children, only having done three quarters of the training is brilliant. So thank you for that. Um, Stephen, I know this is not on here, but do you want to just tell us a little bit about the PGCE element and how you found that? 
um, yeah. yeah, just talk to us Absolutely. about how that works and how that fits into the training program. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the PGC, I, I really enjoyed my PGC assessments and assignments. Um, it's because it gave me a chance to try and discover what what theoretical basis of teaching I was interested in and also made me really think carefully about how the theory applied to my particular subject. So I did my PGC assessment on um, assignment, rather on assessment in RE, and um, I discovered um, that there were was, was some particular bits about RE that made the assessment needs for the subject quite unique but anyway that's what i thought <laughs> um, but um uh, the, it, it's a great way through the pgc to learn a bit more in depth about your subject and the theories of teaching in general the way the uh, the pgc actually fits into the whole program uh is that through sussex university um lucy who was leading the program at the time um she popped in um to waden um at least if i'm remembering correctly at least three times a term uh to my mind um and um she led us through the the uh, assignments and how they needed to be structured what was being expected and how to do well she gave us samples of uh, works of varying quality from previous years for us to have a sense, have a real sense of um, what would work well. So it was quite an e quite a good thing to combine, if you like to, um, with, within the, the, the training program. And I certainly found it very useful. Brilliant. So, so that's just to say the PGC is the additional academic qualification that you do on top of the QTS. So the QTS is the actual qualification that you all end up with at the end of teacher training. And then the, the PGC is the academic bit. Um, and, and like I said in the previous webinars, if you were there for the previous ones, you don't actually ever have to go to Sussex. Lucy comes to us and it's all done really kind of as, as remote learning. Um, and it is, it's exactly what Stephen said. It's that delve deeper into your subject and deeper into the theory and looking at debates within that theory about you know what works what doesn't and what do people think um, and some of our trainees absolutely love it it's not for everybody but some of our trainees absolutely love it and find it really beneficial and then just to finish off on this slide Flo do you want to just talk us a little bit about the other things that we did that weren't just all about work um, so do, <laughs> so some of the other kind of like little things that you experienced and the ways that you bonded with each other um, kind of outside or beyond the program and why that that's really important um, so we did things like um, we had cake baking every week. So Tammy put together a cake roach and I think about maybe four times in the year we had to bring something in. Um, and that was really nice because it would spark up a conversation about who's like sort of made what and whether it was nice or not. <laughs> um, and then we did Christmas related things as well. So we had a Christmas jumper in a gingerbread house competition. So that was fun to just like a detox because it was quite near the end of term. But it was just a nice way to sort of just wind up like your first term as being um, being a teacher mm -hmm. and then also like we had um as our training course like a whatsapp group so we had a place that we could speak to each other and um, outside of being in training if you had any questions and then i know a few subjects had their own subject ones as well so it was really nice to speak about maybe specific subject related matters and then definitely a few people had like pub fridays and things when we had the training sessions on a friday so it's just really nice to have our group was quite social so to just get no to get to know to each to know each other sorry math's not working it's Saturday <laughs> um, but yeah it was just like and at the end of um that morning session we had an hour of lunch it was nice to just get to chat to each other and like that bit of social time and things like that and you just kind of realize that everybody's in the same boat and if you've had a bad day somebody else has had that bad day so you can talk to them about it and I really like, appreciated that bit of time Together. it wasn't to do with that learning thing yeah brilliant and then just to say that that and like I referred to earlier one of the saddest bits of this lot of this whole kind of situation at the moment is that I'm not able to do face to face training with our trainees that it has to all be on zoom and uh, and they miss out on that lovely interaction and really hoping that that comes back in next year that actually we're able to kind of sit in a room together um, and uh, and talk about our experiences because there'll be incredible highs but there will be lows and actually what Flo said there about being able to have that support network is really really important and being able to enjoy life outside of 
of teaching with your colleagues is also really, really important. So thank you for that. That's fab. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, um, if my computer's working, give me a second. Um, Okay, super. So what, we're gonna, what I'd like to do now is just pick your brains a little bit about the school-based training. So that's what we do on site and as a, uh, at Waden or at Rygate, if, depending on which hub you're in. But there's also the vast majority of your training happens at, at, at school uh, and there are different elements of that. So Stephen, do you just want to pick a couple of elements and just talk us through what's it like being in school? So, you know, what's it like being in a department and how were you introduced to teaching? What was that aspect like for you? Sure. Um... So as a complete novice to teaching, um, I, my mentor was very good at very gradually letting me um, stand in front of all children because initially, of course, I, I was fairly nervous. Um, and so I started doing little segments, little episodes of teaching um, where I, in a, in, a, in a typical lesson of about 60 minutes, I did about 10 minutes um, in, in the first half term. So that's all the way to the October half term holidays. So I did little bits here and there. It's only from uh, November onwards that I started taking full lessons. Um, but even then, that was, um, if I'm remembering, again, remembering correctly, it was about five to six lessons per week at the start. Um, so it wasn't a sort of a complete uh, sense of being thrown into the deep end. It was very gradual. There was plenty of time to reflect on what went well and what could be better. There was constant support uh, through the mentor um, in terms of the weekly meetings that we had. And there was, of course, also the oversight from uh, my head of department, um, who was hugely uh, supportive. And it, 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 so gradually, it built up to a case of incremental uh, increases in in, in uh, the number of lessons um, and I'd say the stabilizers kind of felt like they were they they kind of completely came off um, in the latter part in the second half term of the spring term mm. so around the latter part of February onwards so I, I, f I certainly felt much more confident because by that time I'd also had experience of a second placement um, and um, I felt much more confident and ready to face the challenge and unfortunately then there was a ma major global <laughs> pandemic which somewhat <laughs> was, kind of work. yeah. <laughs> But, and that's and that's really important what you said about the fact that actually you weren't thrown in day one into teaching full lessons because I think a lot of people who are coming into teaching that's what they worry about it's like or oh, crumbs you know I literally don't know anything and then day one I've got to teach a full lesson um, but that idea that actually you know you teach bits of lessons and then you teach the full lesson and then your timetable eventually grows over the course of the year and then that idea of the stabilizers you're right the stabilizers do come off second half of the spring term and then in the summer term you're kind mm -hmm. of teaching you know very autonomously and very independently um, to get you ready for your nqt year and that's why it's so amazing that you guys are you know you've done your first half term because you didn't get a chance to experience that so so you've done brilliantly um, Flo, talk to us about why why did you choose school led? Because because why did you not choose to go to a university? What is it about being in a in a school from day one that attracted um, you? Just being involved with it right from the start. Because um, I can be quite like a a nervous person if I'm taken in and out of the situation all the time. Whereas actually getting into that department, I mean, there was only two other teachers in my my department, so it's quite small. So by two weeks in, sort of felt like part of the family so to speak and um sort of knowing what's going on every day so you don't miss out on anything if that makes sense so i even felt a bit strange maybe that we were missing out on the monday and friday and then eventually when we came back after um january and our second placements it was just kind of like you're fully fledged into being part of a team and you know exactly what it's like and there's no surprises coming from it and um, you're not missing loads of time out and then the kids get to know you more as well and that's really important like quite a lot of them feel like a lot of change can be like disrupting for them so for you being there all the time was really nice and it was nice for me as well because I got to know their names and things and didn't feel about nervous about maybe talking to them which right. I get which I worry about still I'm like oh what if I forget their name and then they don't know who I am so yeah it was really nice to just be there right from the right from the start of September yeah definitely 
the lovely thing about children is that you feel nervous about forgetting their names where they're very resilient so they'll be like oh missus forgot my name but she'll remember it later so so that's the really nice thing about children um, and then do, do one of you want to talk to, to talk, talk to us about your experience of, of leading tutor time or being a tutor which is a really important part of being a teacher and of, of the training program so um Flo do you want to just give us your experience of being a tutor who who are you, who are you with and and what's that like um, so I had a year nine tutor group in my main placement school and I was really lucky that we did a residential trip so I got to go and spend like three days out of school with them and that was amazing so I got to know them as people rather than just as students um, and I do you know what? I wished I had done more tutor time now and I like looking at it now I absolutely love my tutor group that I've got at Ash Manor so I wish I'd done more with them and that would be my one bit of advice when you get into a tutor group like pick up as much of that as you can because like they're just amazing to have like those kids that you see every single day um and then in year seven i had a year seven tutor group on in my second placement and um that was good a little bit more challenging because maybe they're nervous still about being in school so um it was a bit harder to get to know them as well because we only had six weeks i got involved more with that tutor group and did like taking register and activities and things like that but i'd say it's definitely important to get to know them because once they know who you are they've kind of got and they'll appear in your classes and things like that as well definitely across the years that you teach but yeah, I just I wish I'd done more of it. So that'd be my one bit of advice: get it, take it by the horns, tutor oh, group. <laughs> thank you. And then Stephen, I'm just going to ask you a question that's a little bit off piece because it's not on the on the on the slide. But I wanted to because you mentioned about your second placement. Just tell us about why that is an important part of the 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 training year. Why is going to that second placement? Uh, you know, why is that? Why do we have that? Why why is it important? What did you gain from it? Um, and what was it like for you? Absolutely. So uh, I, I think the second placement experience for me at a, at a personal and in terms of uh, professionalism, it was a huge blessing. Um, I had a good department to go to um, and inevitably there's, there's bits that need sorting out administratively because they're receiving somebody new and, you know, I'm in a new place. But the second placement, basically, it, it is a good time to get you out of your comfort zone a little bit um, and also to experience maybe a different way of teaching the subject so because uh, uh, teaching RE uh, my first placement um, it, it's a faith school uh, where I'm working now but the second placement was an entirely different experience it wasn't a faith school um, it was just a um, an ordinary school and um, the, the experience of the subject was quite different uh, and having to adjust to that, um, it was a challenge, but it was also a huge rewarding experience because it gave me more insight into the into the depths of the subject and more insight into what it can do in different settings. So the, it was also a different experience in terms of getting to know the children really quickly because you won't, I was only there at my second place for about six weeks, I think. Um, so it was... A, you, you know, you, you really have to kind of have a go at it. Um, and what I said to my mentor there was um, my approach to the second placement um, is that it's a bit like, I mean, if you're into cricket, it's a bit like the, the first 10 overs of a cricket match of the one day international. You, you've just got to go and, and try and score the runs and um, see what happens. Um, so, I, that, and after the second placement, I have to say my confidence uh, was much much better. I felt considerably more at ease in my coming back to my first placement. Considerably more at ease knowing what I thought uh, I had signed up for and what I felt about the subject and teaching itself. So it was a huge blessing. Brilliant, brilliant, and that's really that's really nice to hear the fact that actually you know that second placement took you out of your comfort zone and but what it, but what it meant is when you went back to your main placement after February half term your confidence had really grown and I think that's probably the case for everybody last year I could really see the fact that like you know they'd, they'd been kind of shaken a bit and then they're going back and they're going to make it you know give it a good uh, a, a really good stab at, 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 this, at the main placement after February half term so that's great thank you okay so what we're gonna um what we're gonna do now is just I, I just want to find out a little bit more about if I can move the slide on um, oh, 
why is this being so temperamental? But the next bit is about highlights of your training year. Okay, so I just want to ask, um, if I could start with you, Flo, what would be, what would you say was, was the real highlight or the highlights of your training year? What are the things you look back on and you think, that's it, that was great? Um, definitely, there was a point after February half term and I had these two girls in one of my classes and the whole of my first term, so the Christmas term, had been like not reciprocating to my teaching at all and like so challenging but it was a point after the February half term I came back and they just they just did what I asked and they did it and then they were like they asked me for help and I was just like oh I've won you over and then I was like this is definitely the reason that I want to be a teacher because they've suddenly just gone oh yeah she is she doesn't know what she's talking about we want to do that we want to get involved and it was just such a nice feeling to have the kids being like oh yeah and I knew I was doing it then for the right reasons because I changed something about their attitude towards being in art, which was really nice. I loved that. Oh. And then also um, the residential trip. I absolutely loved that. So hopefully there'll be opportunities, probably not this year, but next year to go on some more. But just getting to know them outside of the classroom, like they're so different. They're so different. And if you have kids that are challenging, like they're completely different people. When you're like maybe on the beach in Lulworth Cove, wherever it is you've gone, they're just like, yeah, but yeah all of it was a highlight really there were some challenging points but yeah definitely that point where I realized I'd made the right decision in my career was oh, that, that's so that. lovely thank you Flo for sharing that that's such a lovely lovely like analogy and lo lo a lovely snapshot Stephen what was your what would you say were your highlights or highlight of the year um my particular highlight was um talking about the story of David um in the the Hebrew Bible um, and it's quite a complicated story um, with, with lots of different issues going on. And um, I thought I had uh, worked out, you know, having done theology and all that sort of thing, I thought I'd worked out the basic essence of the, of the story. But then during the lesson, um, this is supposed to be a year seven lesson. Um, so um, when one of the kids um, started talking about the meaning of repentance, it's only then that I've realized that I, I, I might have actually missed the point of the story completely. Oh, yeah. um, that I hadn't, you know, it, that, that sense of being with fresh, uh, fresh minds, fresh eyes coming to a new uh, subject, to coming to a new lesson, it, it challenges the way you see uh what what the the what what the main point is about because it, it you know because I, I suppose part of me uh, uh, didn't realize that i i could be learning by teaching myself so you know i i'm constantly having to think about actually how do these people how do these children interpret the different things that we talk about so i i learned to be a bit more humble <laughs> that was a highlight that's such a lovely story and that idea that actually you know you can never you can learn so much from children and I will you know even having taught now for 17 years I will always go into lessons where they will tell me something or they'll they'll pick something out that I'm like oh my goodness I didn't even I didn't even think about looking at it like that so and that's just lovely the fact that even in year seven they can teach somebody with a PhD in theology something about theology which is amazing so that's a lovely story thank you Stephen and then just um not to kind of like you know put a dampener on things but what would you say were your biggest challenges or your biggest challenge so Flo shall we start with you what would you say was your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it oh um oh, to be to be in a department that wasn't maybe as organized as I wanted it to be so that meant I had to be more organized than I'd ever been before yeah. my life and I'd say that it was the I got my head around it but only because I really put effort into organizing myself every single day so that would be yeah my biggest challenge is just if something's not there ask for it or obviously you've got Maria and you've got Liz and there's loads of people on the training course that will support you as well but just organizing yourself so that when you come to your professional study days you've got questions ask them then if you don't feel like maybe you can ask them at school so yeah just being being organizing yourself with everything and it's not just having your lunch ready to go it's having your lessons and everything maybe sorted before you leave the leave school for the next day and yeah just questions and stuff don't forget if you have a question write it down otherwise you'll be annoyed and then a week later you go i meant to ask that and then it affects like a lesson or something so yeah brilliant. Just oh, thank, you. thank you for being honest that's brilliant and then Stephen, what would you say was your probably your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it 
Um, I think my biggest challenge was, um, well, there were two really. Uh, uh, one was nerves. So I was a bit nervous about um, standing in front of teenagers and attempting to teach them. <laughs> but I think the, the way in which, as I said earlier, the way in which I was gradually introduced to teaching, um, full episodes, full lessons, that, that made a huge difference. But that and my mentor and head of department's constant support uh, was a huge blessing. And the other more, in terms of a more, more practical level, I think initially I really struggled to um, kind of break down the, the whatever I was trying to teach into chunks where it was scaffolded, where it was gradually, incrementally, uh, you, the students would be led in a more ch in a, into more and more of a challenging or more and more in-depth study of whatever the, the lesson was focusing on. Because I, was, I think there was a tendency within me to go in with the, the challenge and then expect everybody to catch onto it. Uh, but actually, if it's, too, uh, if it's pitched in a wrong way, then you could end up with um, a lesson that's not effective and the children get upset or uh, the behavior isn't particularly good. So that was a massive challenge. So I, I then learned to look at the basics of my, whatever I was trying to teach of each lesson and then gradually build it up. Um, so that, that, that came through the, the, the help of, of my subject tutor and again, my head of department as well. Brilliant. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And, and one of the things we talk about on the programme is this idea of having the curse of knowledge as like as as people with degrees in our subject or with or with experience in our subject and then having to break it down for children and not assuming that just because you get something, they're going to get it. And that and that is a real challenge for all trainees to try and break that down. So thanks for sharing that. That's lovely. And then the last question I have for you both is. Um, the idea of why do you love what you do? So hopefully that will come up in a minute. But why do you love what you do? Why? Why? Um, and then you can, you, if you want to, you can draw on your little experience, uh, a little bit of experience that you've had this half term. Why are you loving what you're doing at the moment? And why? Why is this still the right choice for you, Flo? Do you want to start and just tell us a bit about why? Why do you love it? Um, so I'll draw on what I said earlier. I just love working with children I love being around them and I love it when you see their face when they finally understand something or realize that maybe they've done it well you've sent an email home and then they come back into the next lesson and they've gone I've heard that you said this about my work and that you liked it and it's just the pure joy that you get out of them even when sometimes they can be a right pain and they can be they can be really annoying but you, when you win that child round eventually it's just the best feeling ever I mean I had a moment with my tutor group this year where um they were like oh so do we get a new tutor next year and I was like oh no like you'll have me hopefully for like the full five years and they all just cheered and I was just like oh this is why I'm here because they like they like you and they want to as much as sometimes they're a pain they want to be in that they want to be in school and they enjoy it and you get that reciprocation out of them it's just yeah. just best yeah really enjoy it oh, thank you Flo that's lovely and Stephen why do you why do you love what you do and why are you still loving it now, even though you're absolutely shattered at the end of the first quarter? <laughs> Go on, tell us that. So I, I think what I thought I was signing up for, so trying to help young minds uh, think through the more complicated questions in life, the meaning, the, 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 the beauty, the values and the wonder of life and ethics and all that sort of stuff um, that I thought I, I want to inspire young minds with but I, I think I'm doing that um, I feel that um, you know uh, that, that fundamentally what I signed up to do I am doing it and in my own little way I, I, I sort of think and hope that I'm making a difference to society because after all I mean education is, 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 is a fundamental tool in in my opinion in building a better society in building a better world um, and so in my own little corner of the planet, I'd like to think that I'm making a positive difference yeah. uh, in, in that way. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a privilege and it's a humbling experience to be part of this uh, wonderful thing that is teaching. Brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that bit about the fact that, you know, it, it, you're, you're making, you know, you're making a difference in even though you're, it, 
you know, you're kind of a little part of that difference, but you are still making that difference, that tool yeah. to change society. I love that. So thank you so much to both of you, okay, for, for giving us an insight into the training year and your experience and why you love what you're doing. So um, 